question. Opponents of laws that require automobile drivers and passengers to wear seat belts argue that in a free society, people have the right to take risks as long as the people do not harm others as a result of taking the risks. As a result, they conclude that it should be each person's decision whether or not to wear a seat belt. So what are the facts before us? What are the facts before us? What is fact number one? What is fact number one? It is these opponents of laws. What, what are they opposing? Of compulsory wearing of seat belts when you are sitting in a car. Now what are they saying? They are saying that, that what is their argument? That a person has the right to take risks as long as people do not harm others while taking risks. This is their, their main argument. They say that a person can take risks as long as that person does not harm others by taking that risk. This is their argument. Based on this, they are saying, therefore, a person can be given the choice of whether or not to wear the seat belts. Right? This is the contention. This is the argument. Now, to reach this conclusion, when they say, therefore, a person can be given the choice of whether or not he, can, he wants to wear the seat belt or not, what is that they have assumed about wearing the seat belt? That even though you may be risking yourself, your own self, you are not harming others by taking that risk. So that means the assumption is, if a person is cho you know, choosing not to wear the seat belt, he is not risking anybody else except himself. That is the assumption. That is the assumption. The assumption is very precise. It means they are assuming that wearing the seat belt or not belt is not going to affect anybody else except the person who is wearing the seat belt. Because if I am not wearing a seat belt and an accident happens, I get hurt. But they are thinking, if I am getting hurt, it is my choice. But I am not hurting others by not wearing the seat belt. So therefore, that liberty, that choice should be given to an individual of choosing to wear or not to wear seat belt is the argument. Now what is the question? What is the question? The question is about what would weaken the argument, isn't it? The question says, which of the following, if, if true, most seriously weakens the conclusion drawn above? The assumption here, therefore, is not wearing a seat belt may harm the person, but not anyone else. This is the assumption. So how do I weaken the argument? By proving that the person who is not wearing the seat belt, by not wearing the seat belt, he is also harming somebody else who is wearing the seat belt. This is the way in which you can weaken the argument. The assumption is, I am not wearing the seat belt, but I am not harming you. But how can you weaken the argument by showing? Because I am not wearing the seat belt, somebody else who is wearing the seat belt is getting harmed. Oh, okay, now let's look at the options. I am starting with answer E. In automobile accidents, a greater number of passengers who do not wear seat belts are injured than our passengers who do wear seat belts. What does it tell you? It tells you that not wearing seat belt is risky. But does it tell you because you are not wearing seat belt, somebody else who is wearing seat belt is getting damaged? No, it doesn't. The argument is not about whether wearing seat belts is safe or unsafe. It's about my having the liberty or the choice of making a decision. What E says is that people who are not wearing seat belt, they are getting more harm than others. 
But that's a choice. That's an individual choice. It's something you're taking. It's not weakening the assumption that my not wearing the seatbelt is harming somebody else. So E cannot be my answer. D, the rate of automobile fatalities in states that do not have mandatory seatbelt laws is greater than the rate of fatalities in states that do have such laws. You see, what is this particular fact proving? It is proving that not wearing the seatbelt is definitely very dangerous. But is this argument about whether wearing the seatbelt is less dangerous or more dangerous? It's not that. It's about individual choice. It's about wanting to wear the seatbelt and not harming others. You got the point here. So D is simply proving that not wearing the seatbelt is harmful. But it does not prove that not wearing the seatbelt, I am harming somebody else. Always focus on that point. D is not my answer. Now C is completely irrelevant. Passengers in airplanes are required to wear seat belts during takeoffs and landings. We are talking here about what? Automobiles. So it is irrelevant to our argument. Now option A says, many new cars are built with seat belts that automatically fasten when someone sits in the front seat. Now this is also a fact that has no relevance to the argument. Now I want you to see when we take an argument like this, we basically think the harm we do to somebody else must be physical. Like you get wounded, you get hurt, you die. No, harm can be also in a wilder way. In a wider way in the sense, the harm may not be as wounds or injuries and accidents. It can be as option D, B says. What does option B say? Automobile insurance rates for all automobile owners are higher because of the need to pay for the increased injuries for deaths of people not wearing seat belts. You see, when you buy a car, you are taking an insurance on the car. On what basis is the insurance payment made? On the cost of the car. How expensive is the car? On that is the insurance. The other is the risk factor. Suppose I'm going to buy a car to do racing with it. What will the insurance company do? They'll put a higher insurance premium on me because the risk factor is much higher. It's a, a very great possibility that I'll meet with accidents and the company has to pay me. So when people who are not wearing seat belts and they're getting damaged, they're getting wounded, and they're claiming constantly the insurance, what will happen to the insurance premiums? It will rise up. And therefore, I am wearing the seat belt. But what is happening because you are not wearing the seat belt? I am paying higher premiums to the company. Where I could have got away paying 20,000 rupees, I'm paying 40,000 rupees because others are not paying, play, you know, wearing their seat belt. So the harm here is, through my monetary, monetary expense, not physical. You got the point? So option B, automobile insurance rates for all automobile owners are higher because of the need to pay for the increased injuries or deaths of people not wearing seatbelts. This becomes the best way of weakening the argument's assumption.